What are guard clauses in JavaScript? Guard clauses in JavaScript allows you to write simple functions, easy to read functions, very concise functions. And as we'll be seeing in this video, I'll be using some code examples to simplify the concept of guard classes and also show you how you can use them to write better functions. While editing this video, I realized that I pronounced guard clauses wrongly in a couple of places. I was saying guard classes instead of guard clauses. So I apologize for that. Before we see what guard clauses are, let's first look at a code example. So here I have a function called is subscribed. And what this function does is that it takes in a user object. And the first thing it does here, you have the if condition, which checks if the subscribed property of that user object is true. So this is the same thing as doing user.subscribed equals true. But I'm just going to take that part out since this is a shorter way I can do it. And then if the user is subscribed, then we come into this block. But if the user is not subscribed, then here we return false. Now, in the case that the user is subscribed, we check again if the user's subscription has expired using the subscription expired property of the user object, which again is the same thing as doing equals to true, but I'm just going to take that part out. So in the case that the user's subscription has expired, we return false. We know that the user is not subscribed, but if the user's subscription has not expired, then we come to this part and we return true. Now, let's say we have a user object like this. This is something that could be coming from a database, a backend server or something, but let's just have it for demo purposes like this. This is a user object that has ID of one, name of decode, subscribe property of true, subscription expired property of true. Then here we'll call that function, the is subscribe function, which we declared earlier and would we'll pass this user object here. And then we assign the return value to this variable is user subscribe. And now let's try to log this variable to the console. Now, if I come here and I execute this JavaScript file, you can see we have false. So we know the user is not subscribed. But what happened here was we first check if the subscribe property is true. Here, the subscribe property is true. Then we come into this part here and check if the subscription expired property is true. And as we can see here, it is true. So we returned false, which is the false that we have here. But if I change this subscription expired to false and I run this, now we have true. That's because checking the subscription expired property here, since the subscription expired property is false, then that means we come to this else block and we return true. So this true is coming from here. And in the case that the subscribe property is false and I run this, that means this false is coming from this part because the subscribe property is false. Now you can see that the is subscribe function actually does what we want it to do. It works well. The logic here is fine. But if you notice, this is a bit hard to read because we have one if block here. For this if block, we have an else block here. And not just that, in this if block, we have another if block, a nested if, where we have another if else block. Such instances of if else or nested if if else can affect readability. And there are a couple of ways you can improve this function, but this is where we're going to look at guard classes. So the idea of guard classes is to terminate from a function as soon as possible. It is usually used for functions that have conditions. You have such conditions at the beginning of the function and you terminate from that function early, unless you have reasons to execute other code in the function. And don't worry if that doesn't make sense. We're going to look at it here. So coming to this function, I'm going to comment it. And what I'm going to do now is here, I'm going to create a function called is subscribed. This takes in the user object. Now, what we want to do with guard classes, like I said, is we would have conditions at the beginning of the function and we'll terminate from that function early. Here is what I mean. So first thing we want to check is the user subscribed or not. In this case, I'm going to check if the user is not subscribed. So what I'm going to do is if, and then I have the not logical operator, I have a video on the not logical operator. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. And then I'm going to have user subscribed. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking if the subscribed property of the user is false. So if the subscribe property is false, then what I'm going to do is return from this function early. And here I'm going to return false. Now this is a guard clause. And in this guard clause, I check the subscribe property. If that property is false, I immediately return false from that function. But in the case that the subscribe property is true, then we continue in the function. Here I'm going to have another guard clause. What I'm going to do with this guard clause is if user.subscription expired, that means if the subscription 
information expired property is true, then I'm going to return false again. So here I have the first guard clause, return false if the subscribe property is false. And then I have under guard clause, return false if the subscription expired property is true. Now in the case that these two conditions do not end the function, then here I can now return true. So this is how I've used a guard clause or two guard clauses to improve this function. Instead of having if and then nested if, else and else, what I simply do here is if the user is not subscribed, return false. If the user is not subscribed, the rest of this code will not even run because the function will terminate early from this point. Now, if the subscribe property is true, then we come to this part here and we check if the user subscription has expired, return false. Here we're terminating early again. And since we're terminating here, it means that this part of the function would not run. And in the case that the user subscription has not expired, then now we know that the user is actually subscribed and here we can return true. I can even delete these spaces from here like this. Now, if you check this particular function, this function is like 11 lines, which is a bit hard to read. But if you see this function, this is actually five lines. This is how we have broken down this function using guard clauses. But I like to leave spaces just to improve readability, but it's not something that you have to do. Now, if we run our code again, where we call the is subscribe function with user, if I run this, we have false. And that's because the subscribe property is false. Remember, if the subscribe property is false, we immediately return false here. But if I change this to true and then I come here and I run this, see now we have true. That's because the subscribe property is true and the subscription has not yet expired. This is a code example where we use guard clauses, but let's look at another example. Now let's say I have this function here. This function is called get grade label. And what we do with this function is we pass a grade and then we check if the grade is less than 70, then we have a nested if where we now check if the grade is greater than 50, fair, L, else if the grade is greater than 40 return average else return poor and then at the end of this if we have return pass that means if the grade is actually greater than 70 then we return pass now let's say we have console.log get grade label and we pass 80 if we run this file you see we have pass that is because the grade is greater than 70 so it would run this part but if we have maybe a grade of maybe 50 you can see we now have average that is because the grade is not greater than 50. 50 is not greater than 50, but it is greater than 40. So we have average. Now, how do we simplify this function using guard clauses? Well, what we can do here is we'll come, we'll comment this part, and then we can have function get grade label, which takes a grade. And then using guard clauses, what we want to do is if grade is greater than 70, return pass. You can see here we have this return pass at the end. But now since we want to terminate from this function early, we have the pass at the beginning. If the grade is greater than 70, return pass, return from this function early. But if the grade is not greater than 70, then we check. If grade is greater than 50, return fair. Moving on, if grade is greater than 40, return average. And finally, return by using guard clauses, we terminate early here. And if this part doesn't terminate, then we terminate early here. If this part also doesn't terminate, we terminate early here. And then if this part doesn't terminate, then we know that the grade is poor. And then we have this. Again, if I take out the spaces, you can see the function now looks smaller and even easier to read compared to this part where we have if, else, if, else, if, having so many if, else conditions. So this is how you use guard clauses to terminate from functions early and as you can see it allows you to write simpler functions more concise functions functions that are easier to read if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share subscribe for more simplified javascript videos like this and as well you can also check out more javascript videos that i have on the right here there are a couple of videos you can check them out and learn more about javascript and until my next video have a great rest of your day